know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Because we have a special show and a special guest. Um, now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. <laughs> so stick Say around. <laughs> uh, how you feeling, Harry? You good? You ready I'm to rock doing, and roll? I'm doing good. I'm still trying to get my new catchphrase going. What are you uh, working on now? Yo, Beans flip it out, son. Flip it out. <laughs> what are you said? Flip I said, it out? I said flip it out, son. <laughs> Flip it out. That sound like you're looking for little people dicks, man. I don't like no, the sound of that. Right, back to the drawing board then. That is not Flip it out, son. That was not my I intention. Like the sound of that. Coke. No, it's supposed to be like you do something cool and then be like, flip it out, son. Flip out what? What what you want him to flip out? Yeah, bro, whatever it is. Whatever your <laughs> whatever it is, it, man. Whatever, whatever it is. Go back go back to the drawing board. Bro. Damn it. Yeah, Damn, it. Right. Terrible. Damn right. it, man. Dre, right. you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to not flip it out is what uh, I'm ready to do. Uh, fucking freak. <laughs> no, I need your help on this. Gotta get the kids on board, Andre. Harry, do my no, do the man. introduction, please. Oh, we're lucky lucky enough to be joined uh, by adult film star and personality and uh, online personality. Uh, the fa- the fabulous Sarah J, everybody. Give it up for Sarah J. Hey, what's up, Sarah? How you doing? We've been trying to get you on here for a while. I know, I know. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Busy, busy, busy. That's a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah, I am a big fan. I'm. I must say, I am a big fan. Uh, love your work. I love it. I love the four <laughs> and the the energetic tenacity that you approach your work. Tenacity. Oh, I like that. Thank you. No, I love what I do. I do what I love. How long have you been doing it? 20 years. 20 years, really? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. Um, How crazy related? is that, though? Wow, 20 years. That's crazy. You gonna, How long do you think you're going to do it for? You know, I never really thought about quitting. Like, it's kind of part of who I am. And I have branched out into other arenas. Like, I own my own production company. And I have a management company as well. Mm. So, um, I think that... This is kind of what I specialize in, and I will be in the adult industry in one way, shape, or form, probably forever. Okay. How does that affect relationships? You got a man now? No. No? no. When's the last time you had a man? Uh, uh, very long time ago. Maybe 2012. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's difficult being who you are and 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 having a guy who's who can deal with it. It is for sure, but I also don't think that that's necessarily anything that I'm looking for either. Okay. Um, well, me, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I have a I have a one of the things I think about. Uh, I don't think that anybody should be looking for a relationship. You know, what I mean, I think if you live your if you live in the best version of yourself. And people gravitate to you, and so somehow the things click in that direction. It happens is much. Uh, I, I think that works more much better than when people are going. I'm, I'm, you know, they're more in love with being in a relationship than actually the person that they they connect with. You know. 
Absolutely. And I'm not like against it, but at the same time, I do realize that I probably have a few more roadblocks people have to get over than most people do. And um, it's like, it doesn't really stress me out being single. I kind of enjoy it. Yeah. What about like, dating from the industry? Like people that also work in the same, because they get it, like, you know, they work the same yeah. schedule, same lifestyle. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's very true. And I've created a lot of really good friendships with people within the industry. But, um, you know, like we both have to work. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, um, and so we you don't want to date a porn star? No, it's not saying that I wouldn't date one. It's just that um, I think life would be more interesting not dating a porn star. Like, mm. like for the simple fact, not, not saying that I'm completely against it, but um, like a guy often can only come once or twice a day, right? And if he has to work today and he has to work in the morning, then right. <laughs> you know, like we're, 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 is well, like, I need more, staff I is need... both gonna, we're gonna have to schedule like sex and schedule time together because he's gonna be in Budapest for a month shooting, okay. and I'm gonna be. Like, you know, that, that's also the way, like, busy lives are, you know, when they're in relationships, so. But I, but I, okay, but are you, mm, I, I need I a guess. dude that work off his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile <laughs> boyfriend type thing, like one of them day traders something. He got a, he got a nice startup. Yeah, he plays like poker that. online. Um. <laughs> but, but also, like, has his own friends, like. All right, you can't have both. You can't yeah. have a laptop in. Yeah, friends. Sarah J's selfish. She ain't ready for nobody. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, and that's okay. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, it, yeah. no, nothing would. Nothing's worse than dating somebody selfish. You know, uh, like I mean, yeah. You know, like or being in a so. in a relationship with somebody who's selfish. You you're gonna lose all the time. Yeah. But I mean, and then and you can't. You know, one of the things that I always say that like I had a I had a friend of mine. It was um he fell in love with this porn star and she you know they really had a great connection but i was just like he's just not a guy that could handle that and so uh, he was like man i really love her and, da, 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 da. and he you know and then he, he had like a very uh very adamant strong jewish mother who, <laughs> who and so it was like and i'm like dog are you really you ready, really ready to get this smoke? Yeah, that you, you might to get have it. off more than you can chew. Yeah, and I and I go listen. I I understand the connection that you. Plus, she I wasn't think, Jewish too, the girl. So that was a big problem for the Jewish mom. Yeah, yeah, like that, the, yeah. That, the gangbang is one thing, but the gangbang and go <laughs> within the Jewish. tribe. Right. Honey, he, why couldn't you get yourself a nice Jewish porn star? Yeah, exactly. they're out there. Exactly. So that's uh, the market. I don't see that or not. They ain't yeah. no Jewish porn, yeah. is there? They don't yeah, announce it. Yeah. A bunch of I never stars. seen. Because they're not walking. What are you walking around with Happy a Star right? David they on? And a yarmulke? No, like, no. They never like theme it. That, when they have niggas fucking, they got us in all kind of goofy ass clothing and bones and shit. Dude, niggas that's be the, having handcuffs on. I, so have I, black, Jew, I seen black have dudes in, in Hasidic Orthodox Jew gear. Yeah. I've seen that. All right, I never seen that video. Balash, <laughs> but but it's a, it's an interesting thing, you know. Like when you, you know, when you, I, I was try, I, I was counseling this dude, and I was saying to him, you know, I I'm not. There's no judgment on my part about what anybody does, but you have to be honest if you can really. If are you going to be okay with this? And you also have to be honest as to like what kind of relationship that you can provide somebody, you know, yeah, like, right. I don't think that that's something that I learned. And so like, well into my thirties, you know, mm. like I'm not capable of giving somebody the attention that they might want sometimes, you know, well, it's I, not that like, you're not capable. It's just, you don't want to. Right. Well, like yeah. exactly. Like the way that my life is set up, you see, it's like, I'm not <laughs> really capable in this yeah. like way, you know, but, uh, Seriously, like you have to be honest with yourself, like what you can provide somebody. And you know what? I know my limits and I can provide like a great weekend. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, maybe, like maybe a great weekend, like over and over again for like a decade or two. Mm. But like how far apart? <laughs> right, right. Maybe like a month. So you're like six months, yeah, every six yeah. months. I no, give you a like, great weekend. 
I'm I'm like a probably like a once a month kind of person. Like I'll see you like once a month. You That's know? not like, a bad ratio, but it's not the worst handle. thing, it's but it doesn't good. really make for like a relationship. You no. know, yeah, it doesn't, especially if somebody wants something else. Right. And I have to be honest, like, no, like I would love to like, you know, hang out for like a day or two and like kick it and really spend a lot of good quality time. Mm-hmm. And then you need to go do your thing, whatever that is, and I'll go do mine and I'll see you later. <laughs> but that's mature at least like to go hey this is what i want and you know you express that to somebody so you do it up front as opposed to people who don't know what they want yeah, yeah. absolutely and i try to seek out other people that i think would want where i would feel that like they have a void in that kind of way and i could mm. fit into that space in their life as well mm. How'd you how'd you grow up as a kid by your, like were you kind of a loner or were you had a lot of friends or what was it like no, I was a nerd. I was a loner. Um, I hung out with a lot of adults because, like, I'm an only child, and my mom and dad always took me everywhere with them. I started working in a bar when I was 11. Oh, um, <laughs> I did. I started out like doing the dishes in the kitchen, and right. um, so like, I was always like either by myself or with adults. Right. Yeah. And do you you think that affected you in a way that I mean I I know. Um, like uh my my wife grew up like her mom was like an eco warrior so she grew up in tents and shit okay. chain the chain the trees and shit like I, that right we called them granola crunchers right and so <laughs> but she was always around adults you know yeah. and so her conversation so when you you know when you grow around adults and then you go to elementary school and then you got goofy ass kids that are trying to put boogers on you it's like uh, I'm I'm not for this, you know. So you, you know, you you, yeah, yeah. you you like I looked at school as like a job. Like I just needed to get it. Okay, we I've got until two fifteen, and then I can clock out. You know, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. No, for sure, and it definitely affected my um, relationships, the way I see relationships. I, you know, obviously besides my parents' own relationship, but also like being in a bar surrounded with people that probably have bad relationships in general. Right. Like, right. It's all, like I know, I knew that I didn't know how to have a proper relationship, but I also was like aware enough to just be like, maybe I shouldn't like I got, I was married for like 11 years Okay. and that didn't really work out. It was like my fault generally. And uh, so like I, was like, Generally, you know, your fault. How? Yeah, like I just wasn't a great wife, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I'm just not like always available. <laughs> and I know that sounds terrible, but like, plus we also. No, I mean, it's honest. Friends. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 bad that you you in you know in your youth you make a decision to put you you know because you you know I don't think people understand that it's you know even friendship is a contract. You know, yeah, there's, sure. there's parameters to it and there's boundaries and there's what you want from it and what you're willing to give from it. And that's the same thing is true in relationships. So but if you if you you know, when you're youthful, a lot of times you sign up for deals that you don't really you know, I mean, how often right, we, your mouth rice checks, your ass can't catch yeah. the other way around. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. <how> goes. <laughs> and so people are caught up in your inability to make better decisions. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I think if you understand where you're at and what you're looking for, and there's, a, you know, the the end of that, a lot of times is lonely too, you know, the on the tail end of that. Yeah, you know, that's definitely something that I had to kind of like come to terms with at one point in my life. <laughs> like, I was like, wow, like, what am I doing? Like, what are my goals here? Like, what, like, in, in my personal life, like, what are my relationship goals? <laughs> what will I accept in my life? What do I want in my life? And um, after being married for 11 years and I had a boyfriend for one year, Mm. I was like, you know, like, I'm not really pressed about any of this stuff. Like, actually, Mm. like, if I could just have some nice friends that I can have nice evenings with and like, I really as selfish as this sounds, I kind of only want to be there for the good times. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get you. you know, I mean, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. It's funny because I know I, I remember I dated a girl like that. And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, and, but what what made it her life easy was that she lived with her parents like yeah. way until later and, and up until 50. And then what happens is the parents got old 
And then she ended up having to take care of the parents because yeah. she was the only one who was there. But I mean, there's definitely, I mean, the, you know, I mean, I, I, I respect the fact that you understand what it is you want. I wonder if you have thought about what that looks like on the back end. Um, 70 years old. Do you know what I mean? Right. Okay, of course. And I'm probably going to be alone. Like, yeah. but I have to be like completely okay with that. And right. I know you've, yeah. you've dealt with that in your head that you totally, understand. but I, it is something that I definitely had to deal with and be yeah. like, hmm. Like, yeah. I have I have a couple of female friends that are also in a similar situation. We mm. always joke about how we'll get a house together and just right, like, right. bitch at each other and stuff. So it's like but, Golden like, Girls, but ex porn right, stars. Right. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> exactly. Golden Shower Girls. Oh my Yay. God. Fucking funny. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, if I'm alone, that's okay. Like, I like my own company and, you know, I'm okay with it. Like, and if I'm not alone, that's fine too. Like, it's just that um, I, if it worked, if I worked out with somebody where they fit into my flow, I'm 43. I already have like a life flow and mm. stuff, you know, like All right. it, it would just have to work out. But if it doesn't, it's fine too. I'm like, yeah. okay with it. I got a lot of arts and crafts I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got some Lego sets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, as long as there's still Uber to drive you to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, I, th I think it's dope that you, you know, when you understand what it is, you, you, you know, you know, that, that you understand that there's a, because everybody wants, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die first. You know what so, I mean? Being what you just said, also, it's like, do you really want to just be in a relationship because you have fear of dying alone? Yeah, absolutely. Oh! I, yeah, no. But, like, but I, think I of, but, th but I can't think of, do that. Like I right, can't just well, be like, well, I'm just gonna be nice to you because when I'm 72, I'm gonna need you to push my wheelchair to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 you know, that's not yeah. like I haven't seen that. No, you know, it, it happens it, all the time. All the time. I mean, people sign up for it or they don't. But I, I think, um, I, I think one of the things is that. You know, it's like you if you if people are living their best life, right? Well, I'm, this is what I wanted to ask you: Have you ever met a guy who anticipates your your needs before you've even formed it in your own head? Um. Yeah, I think I I think I've had some friends like that in my life. You know, yeah. but um, it's like it's super enjoyable, and they make great lovers. Like. Honestly, those are the type of people that make great lovers, you know, people that are like in tune with right present stuff. Yeah, present. But is it is it is it the fact that you've you've never I mean, you never or it just doesn't impress you or you don't care or you I like it for a little while and then uh, and I'm, I'm bored with the fact <laughs> I'm bored with the fact that you like me this much, you know, <laughs> you know, it might be a little bit of all that, to be honest with you, depending on the situation. Like it, I think most likely that it's the fact that like, I just can't commit to things. Like I just really can't. Why, why do you think that is? Oh, we're getting psychology. <laughs> I'm, I'm, cur I'm curious, I, you know, um, you know, <sighs> I always put my job first. first I was thinking, all. I was thinking too, maybe even the choice, your choice of job, it, it's a way of keeping people at a distance. Like they, you're giving them obstacles, obstacles. I think it's a way to have like sex with still out having a commitment. Like, like it's honestly, not, it's odd, like I, when I first started, I think it like not now because like I have a whole business, like a whole empire, like I have some business goals and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I think a big part of it for me was a way to have safe professional sex without having any kind of commitment. Like that was very attractive to me when I first started. Is, okay. is that why you got into it? You think subconsciously? That was or? definitely a part of it for sure. Like, I don't think anything subconscious about it. I think it was a little bit intentional. Like, yeah, like I was married at the time and I was like, you know, I wanted to explore my sexuality. I was still really young. I was like, 
so curious about so many things, but I wanted now, to were you were, were you like, was it like really white toast, the whole thing with the marriage and everything and the, uh, like your upbringing or what were you like a wild no, girl? I was like, young, though. I was like 19, though. Oh, like, I mean, like, how yeah. exciting can you get like at 19? Like, I mean, I'm not talking today's generation, but. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that, like, so did you, bec- did, was it something that you, I mean, did it. Were you de- was it deprived and then if once you got an opportunity or I didn't lose my virginity till I was 18. OK, yeah. So <clears throat> like I lost my virginity when I was 18. I got married by the time I was 19. So wow. It's like a very brief like period where I was right, right. single <laughs> and having sex. <laughs> so you weren't really you weren't really you didn't start till late and then you yeah. went right into it. Wow. Um, so, so you kind of felt deprived. So what, and then when you, but I wanted to do it in a controlled way where like, I knew that people wouldn't catch feelings for me and I could like keep my, you know, not have any feelings for them. And we could also do this professionally. And I would, anything that I wanted to explore, whether, you know, it was a fetish or a bondage or something like that, I could be done correctly and under like proper under, supervision. Under supervision. <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. Totally. Like it was super exciting to me and still, to this day, like if I get asked to do something I've never done, which it the list is slim, but if I get asked Shorter to do something nowadays. I've never done, yeah. I'm always like, yeah, except yeah. For, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, couldn't find that. I think the, uh, <laughs> the, the, so, um, so Sarah, I, um, so you've been doing it for 20 years now, and so you uh, I've delved into like doing stuff behind the scenes and stuff. Like how did that process happen? Is that sort of like a player coach role? How does that work for you? You know, um, I started like directing my own scenes kind of right away. Like I got my website 19 years ago and I would say within a couple of years of having my site, I started to direct scenes and, um, having a website is like a beast that you have to constantly feed. So, um, I turned that into like a full on production company and had new, you know, I've got numerous like cameramen and editors. And then I also have a distribution deal with um, pure play media and a broadcast broadcasting deals come through occasionally and stuff. So that's super cool. But directing myself, um, it's like a little bit of a challenge. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like I have a hell of a time orgasming when I'm directing, like, Mm -hmm. I, I do like I just I can't fully like relax because I'm like wondering about how everything is, you know, like it's so you can't oh, so focus you're, on the you're, orgasm you're, like yourself. You're you're in and then you're directing at the at the same time. And uh, yeah, not all the times, but often like I would say probably like half the time I'm directing myself and also directing have you myself. ever had to like give <laughs> stage directions mid sex or something? Like, totally. Like we have to so like, fucking all the time. Funny. Yeah. Pop a dick out and be like, move that camera so to the this, <laughs> so this is um Yeah. This is I'll be, like, this- I'll be like, cut. I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I need you to be over here though, because you're missing the shot because the shot is not my face and titties. The shot is the dick and the pussy. Right. So like, yeah, no, we have to do that all the time. Like you're- So that, let me ask you that because th- this is a uh um you know like if you did it because of your love of sex to explore these things, right? Yeah. But is it to a point because you're directing yourself often that it's not fun, or are you still having fun, or no. is it the, the or is it the creative aspect of it that's fun? Yeah, now that I've gotten older and that I've also been in the industry a long time, I get a lot of satisfaction out of all kinds of different aspects of my job. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I take part sometimes in writing the scripts. I do have two script writers also, but sometimes I write the scripts. Sometimes I do the directing. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I run the camera. So uh, for me, it's just to see like something go from like an idea to like a finished product and Mm. like done well. And creating like images that I know are going to last in people's minds for like a long time. Mm -hmm. That that's like what kind of drives me now, you know, like, wow. So, and how do you venture from that out into the other stuff you're working on? Like, I know you, uh, you have a CBD oil thing that you're doing as well. So how does that work? You know, I've always been part of the cannabis community in like one way, shape or form. And, um, I feel that like a lot of the CBD products are so helpful and 
now that CBD is legal federally and pretty much anybody can take CBD, you know, like I've got grandmas that buy my products and, you know, my mom loves the massage oil. Like, so uh, it can be for a lot of different generations. And part of the cool thing is, is you can get some of the aspects and the benefits of cannabis without actually getting high. You know, a lot of people don't want to be high, but they might suffer from pain or inflammation. Um, yeah, or my grandfather everything. doesn't need a buzz at 93 yes, years he old. he does, bro. Right? He doesn't want it. What the fuck he need is some weed, man. Yeah, like he's already fucking up his prescription. He's his old. Right? I don't understand old people that be sober. Fuck you old and sober for. I don't be know, high. man. <laughs> I agree with you, though. Like, that's the way I'm going out. Like, <laughs> yes. Well, I yeah. I mean, enjoy the last few years. You I'm have 80 till... years old on a fucking eighth of shrooms just going, man. <laughs> yeah, Sarah J's going to be tearing up the old folks' home at 75, just ripped up high and still fucking. <laughs> LSD to the face. She's like, I don't got any grandkids coming over. Screw it. Let's do it. Let's right? tear this place yes. apart. Yeah, that is it is kind of great. That is kind of a great thought to me. I'll be like the one causing the rockets at the old folks' home. Can you, do, do, you still in, do you still enjoy the sex even though you're directing now? I mean, or yeah, you know, I don't direct constantly and I definitely still enjoy the sex. Like, of course, um, yeah, like sometimes like making pizza. Sometimes I forget about enjoying the sex and all of a sudden I have a scene that makes me remember. I was like, damn, that was great. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> right. You yeah. had a um. You, I I I know you were just blowing up Twitter with with the Talib Kweli thing. You mind if we get into that? Uh -huh. the, so uh, like, so what is this? I hadn't heard of this, Dante. So Talib Kweli, who's supposed to be a very uh soulful and woke righteous rapper, um, apparently uh had a little ep with uh. With Sam James, uh, with our guest here, right? A little, a little. I mean, I wouldn't really call it like a little. Like little app. We're actually friends. We've been friends for oh. like fifteen years, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, what did they just find? Somebody just found out, or what, yeah, what? you know, like he was under fire for a lot of stuff that was happening online, and I think people were doing some digging. And um, oh, with that doing because of that chick. What's that chick uh, from Philly that kind of dimed on uh, on on Common? I, I don't heard know. about something Jaguar, like that. Jaguar, Jaguar, anyway. right. <laughs> Jaguar right. Jaguar right. And she right. was talking about she was talking about how com a common common put his dick in her mouth or something like that. And and uh, while she was on this tour bus and and the whole thing with that, you know, and this is this is you'll relate to this 100 percent. This is all about them being such righteous kind of well, you know. a big part of it is that Kali goes online frequently and exposes Nazis that's something that he enjoys doing and, uh. you know the, the social media gods don't really like that so needless to say um, you know people were looking for shots to fire at him and they came across uh, something with our names both in it where somebody saw us out together mm. and literally that was it like yeah it wasn't really a big deal and we go out together sometimes because we're friends. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've literally known him probably, I think, 12, 13 years. Wow. Yeah, we've known each other. Yeah, long. that's, yeah, that's old. That's, well, that's once every month. That, I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good ratio, Sarah. That's like 144 weekends. 144 weekends. <laughs> Sarah, you're you're very like um, I, I when we interview people in the adult film industry, we find like two styles to people who are very like quiet off camera and stuff. But you you're very committed and proud of it. Like right now, as we speak, you are wearing a shirt that says that reads ass titties. Ass, ass and titties, ass, ass, and ass, ass, titties, ass titties, 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 titties. titties. Ass, ass, titties. Ass, ass, now, Harry ain't got no flavor. You, man. Well, I was reading it. I wasn't saying it so I people was, can I hear. I was reading it. Sir. I was reading it, Andre. I, I'm a journalist here. What I'm doing is <laughs> I have journalistic integrity. Here, yes, but, NPR voice. But what, uh, do, you, do you find that to be the case, that there are sort of two types of people in the adult film industry, people who are very on all the time? <laughs> Yeah, generally. But um, I feel like I'm kind of like a hybrid because I, I'll pit like I'm like kind of goofy and wild like by myself, but 
I also don't, I'm like a little bit of a nerd and a little bit of an introvert. So like, I don't really like attention when I go outside. So to be honest with you, so. Um, so would you wear that ass and titty shirt outside <laughs> to go to the grocery I, store? You know what? The only place that I would wear this ass and titty shirt is if I had my security with me. Mm-hmm. Like, like if we, I, could, I would wear it to like maybe a concert or a festival or something with my security with me. Mm. How often <laughs> no, do you have to travel with security now? Um, I've been traveling with security since maybe I was eight, nine. Yeah, oh, 2008, okay. 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't know that. Is that a common thing in the adult film industry? Is that for you mostly? It makes sense. Um, there's, like a, there's like a handful of us that travels with security. Yeah, like not everybody, but... Um, well, that's also got to make dating a little difficult for people <laughs> to even hit on you. When there's a security guard next to you, no, you just um, send that. You send that big motherfucker over. Yo, get that dude. <laughs> yeah, but like he bets. Like he, the people don't know he's the key. He's the key. He's the yeah. game master. You yeah. make nice with him. You got you got one foot in the gate. <laughs> so how would a person make nice with the security guard? I'm curious. No, just be cool. You know. Like, don't be a dick. Like. It's it could be so easy, but people security guards like, like snacks. Get that nigga a snack. <laughs> hey man, security <laughs> guards love it, snacks. You got a bottle of water? Yeah. You good? You thirsty? Right. That's it, it man. If you, <laughs> you want a cold one, or you like it? You like it room temperature? <laughs> yeah, get a nigga a brewski. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, like I decided, uh, I was at a concert and. Before the concert had started, I was in Jersey. I had been um, at the convention like all week. And so like, I'm in this concert, the lights are all up and I go to see my girlfriend who's got like floor seats. I'm like three rows up from the floor on the side and she's got floor seats. So I like go down to see her mm-hmm. and, and I am not exaggerating like, cause it was super overwhelming and I thought I was gonna throw up. Like the whole stadium, it felt like was saying my name, right? Because mm. everybody saw me like walk down there, and right, then, right. like yeah, I was like, oh my god, like this is too much. Like, what is going on? Yeah. And so I go back to my seats, and now everybody sees where I'm sitting, right. and um, they're climbing over the seats and like through the seats and over people, and like it was a kind of a fucking mess. And I definitely yeah. didn't get to enjoy the concert, and I was real sad. Right. And a lot of times I, you know, that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back, but like there had been a lot of times where I felt unsafe or like, you know, wildly inconvenienced, mm. you know, in public because people will know who I am and right. not saying that I, I love my fans. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes y'all act out of pocket. And <laughs> so um, at that moment, I was like, that's it. I'm going to have to just like, you know, you think about like financially and stuff and you're like, is this something I want to afford? Yeah, t- it's totally worth the peace of mind. Get yourself yeah. security. Yo, who, whose concert was it? Who's, uh, it was Watch the Throne. Oh, shit. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I had used security like for events before that, like, like mm. when I went to a convention or like when I did like a, you know, an event, the dancing thing or whatever. Yeah. But I'd never use security on like, a, I'm going out to dinner or I'm going out to a club or until that moment. And I was like, oh, this is going to happen. Do you still do you still feature in clubs like you go on the road and still feature in clubs? I do. Are, are you are you tired of that? I mean, is it is, is it like okay, it's a money grab now or is or are you still? I actually it? enjoy going to the clubs, but this whole like COVID thing, you know? Yeah, like I'm not really quite ready to do that mm-hmm. yet. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. uh, because you wonder, I always wonder, and you know, there's there's con- like we're all stand up comics, and some comics just want to do it well enough so that they can not do it. Oh then- no, you know, I stripped for years, and so like going back to the club in this kind of way is like yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I'm only there for the weekend. It's very well, you're the headliner this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zara don't all she care about is a weekend and all her time yeah. is a weekend Everything is about the weekend. <laughs> I'm here for a good time not a long time you know yeah, that's that's kind of, yeah and, and then they're also like super excited to see me my fans are there they're super hyped all the girls are like oh my god yay Sarah's here so everybody's like so excited to see me I love that mm. and then as soon as it gets boring I'm out yeah you, you <laughs> talked about you talked about being sort of you said a geek nerdy a little bit. What is the geekiest thing you do? 
Um, my entire bedroom is covered in like action figures and Star Wars. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't give a fuck about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. no, I have like a lot of like Toki Doki um, yeah. figures and Star Wars. Oh, you collect? Do you collect? Mm-hmm. Like, like in the box, like you know the no, dates. I like, I like to play with them. I'm not gonna uh, okay. Uh, Could you imagine going to uh, open a weekend of the new Star Wars film and then you just see Sarah J. Yes. It's We're it's a, it's yeah, it's with it's the it. Princess Leia curls, <laughs> but also the ass and titty shirt. <laughs> No, I went with my security for sure. The that's last, how you, that's the how last you, three Star Wars. That's how you run up on, on Sarah. You just go up, knock on the door with a Boba Fett. She was like, come <laughs> right in. Come on. I got three days available till Monday. You could come <laughs> I, on in. I got a week. I got a weekend for you. That's I got it. A weekend. <laughs> Dressed as Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <A little> cosplay. <laughs> right? Cosplay. You a nerd. You got to fuck with anime. I don't really. Um, I do have a hentai hero character. Like I'm in a video game. Oh yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Like I think it's really cool. Have you ever merged? Game. You've never merged the two and done the cosplay thing because I know those yeah, videos are popular as well. They to are some popular. Degree. No, I haven't really done it. Like I've got I've got like some custom requests where I do like custom videos for fans and they'll make requests to certain things. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've never done anything where I've like. Publish it, put it out there. Be dope to do a Star Wars thing, right? Yeah, I did some Darth Vader pictures. Uh, and, um, I do have a Princess Leia costume upstairs that I haven't. Used. I mean, don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's pretty basic. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. The um, I'm wondering too. I'm wondering if um, like you know what's 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 funny to me is like I, the journey to get there. I'm a weird guy when it comes to porn stars. I either really like them or I hate them. <laughs> like, like <laughs> I, I, I enjoy your, I enjoy your company. I enjoy talking to you because there's dimensions to you, and and there's you know, uh, I, it, it's just interesting to kind of see the con- conceptually how you get there. And I'm wondering, there's a like you keep talking about the, the level of of selfishness, right? That you, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, I, I say this all the time that you know, if you don't put your happiness first, nobody else will. So you have to do that but yeah. i think you're also kind of i think it's interesting that you're honest about the negative side that what what comes with that the consequences you know, that come with that consequences yeah. Yeah, and, sure. and you don't you don't you don't see that a lot of times i don't see that a lot of times where people are are making decisions and ready for the consequences they even thought that out to to a certain extent um i'm wondering if as you get older you do you think that will change and where you, you know, you would want the companionship or, you yeah, know. I totally could. And I'm open to that too. Like life is long. And if you don't change, then you're, you know, like if you're not changing, you're not growing. So yeah. no, as of right now, I'm kind of good. I'm just yeah. for a couple What's days. having fun? What's yeah. the biggest change that you've experienced personally? Not, not, not professionally, but just as a human being in the last 20 years. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess like not wanting to be married, that was pretty fucking big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah, put yourself like, with the whole housewife thing, like the the, the married thing when, when you got married? Like, were you fully into it in that capacity? Yeah. Like, I, um, I just really loved my husband, you know, like I just really, really loved him. Like, I thought he was a great person and. I thought he was unique and that I didn't would never find anybody like him and that I wouldn't find anybody to understand me like he understood me and like all that great stuff. But also like I can just be happy that he's in my life, you know, like I can be happy that he was in my life when he was. I can just be happy and I can still love him from like way over here. Like I don't have to live with him and I'm just be like, hope you're good. Sending out good vibes, you know, like. It doesn't mean that you have to be married to somebody. So um, I think that the way that my life was going, it was just like veering off of his. After I met him when I was 11 or 19, we were together for 11 years. So, you know, after that period of time, you're 30 from 19 to 30, you better do some growing and changing. Like, come on. Right. Well, your your mind doesn't stop until it physically doesn't stop growing until you're in your late 20s. 
maybe early 30s. So you, yeah. you, you, you know, I was you're like totally different by then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, you just have to take those things into consideration. And if I can do that kind of growing in those 11 years, who knows what kind of growing I'm going to do in the next 11 years? You, know? you, 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 you don't get jealous. You don't get possessive. Is that how are you at a place where that's so not important? You know. Because, I mean, how could I? Like, I do my own thing, too. I just, like, appreciate people who are respectful, though. Like, you know, don't, like, do things deceptive or manipulative. You know, don't, be, like, be malicious to someone or, mm. you know, hurtful intentionally. Right. And I think if, um, you know, you keep those things in mind, like, the rest of the minor details are just, like, minor. <laughs> yeah, that, seem, that seems like a simple thing, and that's, that's so rare, that you find people like that, you know, like I always say, I put my feet on the floor with the intention on truth, credibility, civility and empathy. And if you do that, I think it, 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 it satisfies everything, because as soon as you start to you, you as soon as you start lying, you, you're faking, then you have to you, you, you're looking for the validation for the thing that was missing in the first place that made you lie about it. I, like I, I say this all the time. If you're five foot four and you tell everybody you're five foot six, it's because you don't think you're good enough. You don't think. Right. And you think that the, the value of what you are is two inches. And somehow, if I just had two more inches, I would be enough that at least I could be that, which is crazy that you're even thinking. But people do. Yeah, they think like that. People think, I, I mean, I don't think they articulate it. I think when you articulate it to them in that way, they understand how ridiculous it is. But it seems, if I guess it feels like that's okay. You know, that. Yeah, it's like a little self, you know, subconscious a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's below the surface. And then when you tell them, you, you, this is what you're saying that somehow nothing else that you have to offer has any value but your height simply because you're, you know. I've always been like a really self-aware person. And whenever I do something or make a decision, I have to like really analyze it and know why. Like, why am I saying this? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. How does this make me feel? You know, that kind of thing. So I try to be as self-aware as possible and like very. What, what do you think made you be that way? Like, what do you, well, how did you end up that way? Maybe I'm an only child and I just think a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've always been, like, really, really self-aware. I do think that um, it has a lot to do with hanging out with adults because you wouldn't want to say something stupid and then want to, like, you know, you always wanted to be at the adult party and not yeah, sit yeah. to the bed, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be you, like, you don't want to go to bed. <laughs> like, you know what I said? Enough things. You need to go to bed. So, like, I just remember being, like, young and just quiet and, yeah. like, listening to, yeah. like, what people said, you know? Like, <laughs> You was trying to you was trying to stay at the party. That's like yeah, that's, that's your know. that's your whole theme throughout your whole. You just trying <laughs> to weekend. stay at the party. Yes, <laughs> I want to know. Like I want to know what everybody's doing. <laughs> I'm still at the party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's you ever think that that's one of the reasons why you only give a weekend? You don't want to get thrown out of the party. You just like no, I know, like because I don't like to be like I work a lot. Like yeah. like I basically you know I run several businesses and like I work a lot. So like I don't like to have someone around me when I'm working because I like to stay focused on work. And if I've got somebody like grabbing my ass or like kissing me, I'm like okay, I, I'm I'm doing the computer that is true. right that's now. Fucking does that make sense and then like yeah. you know when yeah, sure. I, i'm like okay i have i'm actually off for three days in a row like i should have somebody come over and let's have some fun and then like when i have to go back to work you can go wherever you came from <laughs> yeah well also because you're doing a lot of stuff especially the behind the scenes stuff like yeah. i know uh we're told you did a talent search in columbia and you're doing things that are like international travel and stuff yeah. so it's not just you know fucking on film the way people you're organizing things like that's there's a lot of detail that goes into that i manage um six different talents and i produce content for all six of them and um several different websites so i've got like a certain amount of content that i have to come up with every month and mm. it's a lot of process there's a lot of people involved and uh you know i gotta 
call the editors and the graphic designers. We have to have Zoom meetings and the content manager and my assistant. And, you know, it's like, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of people involved and I'm super busy and I need to be like hyper focused in order to have time off to spend with somebody or somebody's, you know? Do you, so, do you do you make money off the streams or is it under subscription based or what I is it? I make money in every way. Possible. Right, but well, that's why I guess that's <laughs> what I'm asking. Do do they pay your pay you for streams as well? It just depends on what um, platform I'm using. Each platform pays a little bit differently. Mm. Um, some platforms you get a subscription cost. Some platforms, um, you're selling like video on demand, like clips. Some. Um, you get like a view share, which is this complicated algorithm that mm. they screw you over with. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So it's a lot of different ways, but I make money on every kind of platform in every kind of way. Plus I also do like, you know, phone sex and text messaging and cam shows and like, that's a lot of separate yeah. stuff. I can see how that yeah. gets busy. Yeah. yeah. Or like, you're like, hey, I don't have time to fuck. I got to go on camera. Oh, no, no I got to make phone sure. calls. Like, I mean, I kind of have it like besides like running businesses, I also have like obligations that feel kind of like a job sometimes like three yeah. days a week, you know, I'm on cam doing some kind of camming. So it's like people will be like, hey, you want to go to dinner tonight? I'm like, oh, I mean, we have to go early because I need to be back here by 930 because I got my cam soda show or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. <clears throat> now you do a, a lot of the job. Yeah, you're in charge of a lot of the hiring and stuff. And yeah. I know you uh, you talk about uh, I know you're big into Black Lives Matter and stuff. And that affects how you uh, view your hiring process. How does it how does it affect it? Like, honestly, I mean, I've always had a really diverse group of friends and group of people that I work with, like super diverse. I don't even think about it. But then when I look around, I'm like, mm. oh, actually, my cameraman is Venezuelan. I've got another one that's a Jewish. I've got an assistant who is Ukrainian. I've got my script writer. I've got two script writers that are African American. Mm. You know, so like, um, yeah, we mix it all up around here. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Um, but I try to do that kind of like intentionally um, to make sure that we can create like a product that everybody can be proud to be a part of. Right. Um, I never try to like fetishize race or make people feel uncomfortable in any kind of way. And so having all different kinds of people around kind of ensures that I'm not overlooking something that could be really simple and very unintentional for me, you know? Right. And um, so like one of the things that is a goal of my production company is to kind of like just normalize having sex outside your own ethnicity so not trying to fetishize it, but like just yeah. make it normal. Like, you know, sometimes bosses and secretaries have sex. Sometimes the boss is a woman. Sometimes the secretary is a man. Sometimes yeah. one of them is black. Sometimes one of them might be like, you know, Native American. Nice. Like, you know, it could be like whatever. But, people um, fuck. People just fuck. actually fuck. And sometimes they don't look like they're from the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's it's interesting because I, I was thinking, I, you know, I know back in the days when you had a lot of the everything was like contracted and it was a, so it, it's almost like the same thing that's happening with comedy with, with us. All the gatekeepers have been removed because the Internet is all wide open, which is one of the reasons why you got to direct and you got to edit and you got to you got to write and scripts and do this. And, and then and it's the same thing that's happening with us now. It's like one of the reasons why we have the podcast and why we have the Patreon. If y'all listening to this, please sign up for our Patreon. It's uh uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Please support us so we can do it. But we're all putting this content out and where it was a where you had the gatekeepers where we could say where, you know, I, I um you can have a big old booty and it's fine because there are people who want a big old booty and don't want something that that's just skin and bones. And so there's a, even a diversity in that, because I know at one time I know I know I, I was I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cool with Mo and uh, Mo the and, monster and Mo when we had Mo on um, and um, but Mo Mo was saying how he, he um, 
you know, the the difference in the price, like when you did interracial stuff and 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 when you crossed those color lines, it was almost like like you couldn't make the same money. You know, there was a whole hierarchy at some one one time. And I'm wondering how that's affected now, because now you're the gatekeeper and the actual creators are creating the content. So. A lot of that kind of behavior um, was still going on up until this year. And it it definitely tapered off slightly. And when I say behavior, I mean... um, Racism. (laughs) Well, obviously racism, but also the practice of paying um, people of color less, you know? Uh And we had this year with all the, well, 2020 with all the BLM stuff. And we had a lot of internal meetings within our industry and um, a group came together called um, BIPOC um, Mm. Collective, and they organized a lot of meetings where we were able to hear how the people of color in our industry feel about a lot of these storylines and stuff and feel about um, the way that they get paid and feel about the way that they're treated on set. And it was cool because like, I knew a lot of this already because I've always worked within, um, you know, with other people that are Uh, different color than me. So I already knew a lot of this, but it was interesting hearing things I didn't know. Like, I didn't even think about the fact that, like, a lot of times the black girls have to get done by makeup artists who are used to doing white faces. And they're like, you know, if you're hiring black girls, can you please get a black makeup makeup artist that's used to doing them with textured hair and, like, a dark skin color, you know? Right, right, right. Like, just even stuff like that. Or lighting um, it. Sometimes you have to light it in a different... Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. right, all of it. I mean, but the point is, I mean, that's always the case. It's the it's sometimes it's just the, it's the not knowing. It's just the assuming that it is th- that the, the water that you swim in is it, that you, we're aware of it. You yeah, know? I know, for sure. And, and, and once it, you make it make it like aware and you start talking about it, then it's up to people like myself who are producers to like listen to these claims and be yeah. like, oh, okay, my bad. I had no right. idea. Right. So, you know, the last um, girl with dark skin that I hired, I was like, hey, this is the makeup artist that I usually use. Is this okay for you? And I let her look at her work and make the decision herself. A lot of the performers, a lot of the claims that they had um, during these meetings were actually very valid claims for like all performers, you know, things right. like, we would kind of like to approve the script before we're actually in it, if that's possible. Like, could you shoot right. it over to us the night before? And I know a lot of performers would like that because they right. want to like look at the script and make sure that there's nothing in there that they feel uncomfortable with, which right. I, get. I feel the same way. Like I don't do um, like taboo incest family stuff like uh-huh. at all, no matter what they change the titles to, yeah. um, but that's like a whole nother problem. But like, yeah, like if I had the script the night before, I might want to like look at it and make sure they didn't sneak any, any like mommy shit on me, you know? Right, 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 right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but like, as far as like the pay goes, I think a lot of that is really, really, really frowned upon now. Like I, the last time that I came across a problem like that was kind of recently. And I went to book a girl through an agent and he knew who he was talking to. And he says to me, she has a big cock fee. And I actually found that totally acceptable. Like, because before it would have been like, oh, it's this much for interracial. Now he gives me a big cock fee, which I'm like, okay, but the next big cock white guy that I book her with, it better be the same price, you know? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. I'd, rather, I'd rather you charge me by the inch than by the skin color. <laughs> 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 like, that's crazy. That's, that's a hell of like, a way to do it. That's the Donald Trump B thing on the, on the, on the application shit. The, oh, the what? Yeah. Don, uh, during some tr- uh, some lawsuits, they allege that Donald Trump would put in the nineties. In the nineties, on was, certain uh, people who are applying to houses or apartments in Donald Trump's uh, complex and in his, Brooklyn, his, in Brooklyn, right over in, here, like on uh, in Flatbush. Yeah. So they said that uh, allegedly some of them would have bees on them. The for letter blacks. B. Yeah, yeah, I would assume so. For the blacks, it ain't for <laughs> best. <laughs> ain't it great anyway, how everybody um, hate us? Mm. Sarah, thank you so much for doing this. I really, <laughs> I'm glad we could get get back to you, and I'm glad we could have some time to talk to you and kind of kick sure. it a little bit. I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'd love to have you back as well. That'd be nice. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be able to make it work. 
And where can people get your uh, the CBD oil? And yeah, all let me show things? you right quick. So like I've got, um, this is the massage oil. It's called Long Day. Mm. It's got 400 milligrams of CBD. And this one is the Long Night Sex Lube, Personal Lubricant. And How much uh, is also, this one is, um, this one's got 400 as well. So How does that work? How does, How does that work? What's the what's the the what it's was it what is it supposed to do? I mean, right. I, so CBD, is, CBD takes pain away. Yep, it's anti-inflammatory and it increases circulation, which uh, circulation increases stimulation, right? Uh, so like labia, clitoris, the head of your dick, like all that is going to be like a little bit more sensitive. So, you know, uh, when there's some touching going on, it's going to feel like extra good. And then yeah. also taking the pain away is great, especially for the inside of a woman. If like we've already had like a little bit of a rough the night the night before or something, mm. you know, so right. that feels really good too. So I'm um, definitely yeah, like nice. relaxes like the vagina muscles to the point where like, um, you, a woman can have like a better orgasm for mm -hmm. sure because she's not like a lot of times you know if you don't like rev up the engines you know you're like yeah. you're like oh okay but yeah. like yeah this kind of like relaxes all the vagina muscles on the inside i a lot of times i squirt when i use it because my pussy is like relaxed yeah. <laughs> chilling Chilling. That is a great. That is a great uh, promotion for the CBD oil. That is. That is a great testimonial. <laughs> it's a lot better than when Larry King used to do those garlic commercials. <laughs> or whatever. It's a hell of a lot more interesting. Right. So Jay talking yeah, about we, a pussy. Same thing. So, same thing. Yeah, we, the bath bombs they come in two cents, eucalyptus and lavender, and they're super strong. They're 100 milligrams for one bath bomb. Mm. So like you're probably gonna fall asleep after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah right. J talking about her pussy could kind of sell anything. Like even if she was selling <laughs> like Bob's discount furniture or whatever, <laughs> I think it would work. <laughs> <laughs> she just go. I'd love to fuck on this bed. And like, all right, I'm buying that one. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> this uh, bed comes with a pre wet stain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Harry, talk to me. I mean, Dre, Dre, you go first. Give me uh, credit. Andre D. Thompson on all of internet. Go to Google, type my name in. It's very easy to find me. Come on. Harry, talk to uh, me. You could go to my uh, stuff is uh, at Harry Turjanian. Um, you can check me out on Catalyst Wrestling, which is on the Fight Network uh, and Fight TV, the Fight app, all the bunch of different fight stuff. And uh, also check out Man School 202 on the YouTube page and Instagram and TikTok. Uh, Real Man School 202 on Instagram, Man School 202 on uh, TikTok. Follow us. We got some more stuff coming out soon. Don't forget the Patreon. Yeah, and check out the YouTube page because you can see the uh, fabulous shirt that Sarah J is wearing. Uh, and just Sarah J in general. Uh, mm -hmm. Why not do that? And Andre's background. Andre, what's the background today? That's Queens, bro. Oh, okay. All right. You said that like a guy doing a traffic report on a local, on <laughs> a New York one. Over on the LinkedIn Expressway. We got <laughs> it's traffic up to here. They fucking wildin' up there. Niggas cannot drive. <laughs> I'll be the illest news nigga ever, yo. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why you this hostile. Uh, That's how you got to do it, bro. I, I didn't get to tell you where I where you can get this stuff. Oh, where can you get it, Sarah? So, SarahJCBD.com is where you can get it. And um, if you want to know anything else about me, you can go to SarahJLinks.com. Okay. Uh, you could uh, all my stuff is Dante Nero D A N T E N E R O the Dante Nero on Instagram. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. It's page uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. And also, if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, all you got to do is go to DanteNero.com, click on consult. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.